All right, a, uh, a a person in the comments section on my last video, or the video before last about the uh, the dual conversion radio. Uh, his name is Pickle, Pixel Waster, and uh, he mentioned that it's possible I could have a um, a frequency module that has um, a program pin. See. When he said program pin to me, it meant more work, okay? Uh, there's a certain amount of work I will do. And there's a certain amount of work I won't do. And one of the things I don't like doing is learning another programming language or going down that rabbit hole. But he mentioned there's a pin. So I at least got my manual out for this. I have the manuals. Remember I did the video and people were like, well, why didn't you give us the link for the manuals? Well, you go look and you put in the, what it is and it pops up. Okay, so I went looking and I had the manual already in two places on my computer. And I looked at it, I saw the programming pin and it's pin four. And I said, well, at least I'll get out there and I'll put a sec, I'll, I'll put the pin on. And uh, in this case here, I got a wire we're going to go to ground, okay, and it's going to go to the second thing. So you notice I have an offset set. Uh, I won't say that's that's 40 meters, but I did it. I did an experiment. So in other words, when you got the jumper in and you you press the button, let's see if I'm in the frame. All right, IF offset. I put two mega cycles in and a six on the end. I just just changed the the IF offset and the offset does not change and then it has to be uh, above or below all right channel a all right so there's things we can do all right so that basically i wouldn't have called it a program pin myself okay in other words i would have called it a band switch but i think what it's for is when you transmit uh it shows the frequency you're transmitting on and then when you untransmit it switches to the other to the other band and it then shows you the receiving frequency because remember receiving frequency is offset from the actual transmit frequency now in this case i was copying a um what the hell is it a collins radio okay and i don't know how flipping back and forth is going to affect my um my uh, huff and puff you know i don't know yet but in other words the, this main tuning stays within the same range no matter what frequency you're picking up. I know it seems hard. Go look it up. Go look up at the Collins stuff. In other words, you come into an RF amp, which I have one here, RF amp. Then you go to a, a, a pre-selector. And this drops the, the frequency coming in and makes it go lower. And each band has a different crystal. So in other words... The main tuning, which is your second conversion, always sees the same spread of frequency, okay? So, which makes it really ideal is you design the huff and puff to go with your, your oscillator, which has a specific spread. So now, when you change frequencies, your huff and puff circuit doesn't have to change. It keeps the oscillator within the same range, or wherever you put it within that range, it, it locks it in. What changes is the dis the difference between the display and the frequency, the offset. All right. So only having one offset brought my big plans to a crashing halt. See, when I started doing the dual conversion and looking at the columns and all, I never thought, am I going to have problems with my display or my frequency counter? You know, see, you, in your mind, you go in these, these loops where, well, I have an offset. Well, what if the offset is different for each band? You're screwed. Now, they do sell a, um, a frequency counter or display for the Collins, but it's got all kinds of programming in there for each band. Uh, the off, it has a different offset for each band, and it's $150. So now I'm sitting at looking at my project totally collapses. So this guy, uh, Pixel Waster, uh, wait, P Pixel Waster, he, he makes a comment and, and I'm like, well, let me go look what he's doing. I see the word program and right away I have a problem. I, I, I am a little, uh, I like change, 
but not too much change at one time. I don't like a project going going too complicated. Already, you know, got to remember, I built the huff and puff so my oscillator won't drift. Okay? I built a bunch of circuit boards in module form. So as I build the receiver, if I don't like a certain section, it's not, not enough gain, blah, blah, blah. I could just undo four bolts, redesign a, a new board, and drop, uh, and drop a new board in there. See, this, this receiver is an ongoing thing. Okay? First of all, I went, let's go digital. Let's go with a digital readout. Let's find an oscillator that drifts the least amount, which turned out to be, oh, uh, now, a Franklin oscillator. Okay? So I come up with a, I, I got a Franklin oscillator, and then I got the digital display that I liked, unlike that LCD one that bobbles. It bobbles, it itself has a problem. It's not, your frequency is unstable and it bobbles. It's the display. So I switched to this LED one and then I bought two and one of them was bad I went off on a tangent with that but the overall project every time I give up it, it, it there's something breaks free in other words uh, I find an oscillator which is a Franklin stable the display was crap changed to LED one okay and then uh, uh, the oscillators drifting and I'm getting a little fanatical so then I get into the huff and puff and then I design a huff and puff for a certain range and then I realized that the Collins uh, receiver, its main oscillator has a ferrite uh, slug coil. And it, it, it stays within the same range no matter what frequency you're on. And I'm like, holy crap, now I don't have to build uh, a different huff and puff circuitry or, or change the switch for each, for each frequency range. So I'm like, we're, 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 it's, it's a win-win situation, but I didn't realize that to build a two-band radio that the frequency counter display unit would have to be able to switch some way. So I, I basically threw my hands up. I showed you, uh, I, I told you on my uh, video that, you know, I, I got I got hit with a pitfall. Or you would call it, so, uh, basically say, I painted myself into a corner. All right, and then this guy come along and mentioned the program pin. Of course, I looked at that and I'm like, uh, first, he wanted to send me the, the information. I already had the information on this. All right? I, I, I'm I always ahead on stuff, but there's certain buzzwords that if you say program, uh, I know how to program whatever band I'm on on this display and how to go put the offset in there. And if it's uh, the offset is above or below the frequency, uh, I know how to turn the decimal point on and off. That I know how to do. But I didn't realize this had two bands on it and I'm pretty sure that the second band is when you're in transmit so you're transmitting it shows you the frequency you're transmitting on then when you go into receive it switches to a different a different setting which then uh, adjusts the offset so you still are on the same frequency listening so your display always gives you the same frequency for receiver transmit but it really isn't on the same frequency okay but it just happened to be a trick where it works with what I'm doing here because I picked the uh, the Collins radio to copy and I also have a radio coming maybe today or tomorrow it's another long story uh, I ordered it last week from eBay I bought it I got a pretty good price on it but it looks like the guy hasn't shipped it I got it I got this kind of feeling that this guy's not going to send it to me because he didn't get enough for it uh, I watched two other eBay uh, BC348s get pulled down because the guy wasn't, he was bidding it up and he didn't get what he wants. So we'll see if I get it. The thing's got all the wrong knobs on it. It's got some holes drilled in it. But I want to do experiments and I don't want to experiment on a BC348 that's near mint condition. Okay. So I got a crappy one real cheap. Hopefully that shows up and I'll work on that. But as far as the, uh, the dual conversion uh, circuit that I've been building in my head for Geez, how many, it's over a year, um, you know, the modules, the modules originally were going to be in, inside of, um, oh, those, those mints, uh, Altoid mints, Altoids, I got a, I got a tin over there, anyway, each section was going to be in a, in a, in a, one of them tin boxes with, um, shielded wire between them, I did it, I built the modules, but it was so sloppy, all these shielded wires everywhere, I'm like, you know what, I can do better than this, you know, so that's where I'm at. I've been building this thing in my head, and it's only for uh, uh, 40 and 80 meters at night. You know, just before bedtime, 
those are the two bands that I listen to. And I really would like to have some shortwave stations in there. See, the Charles Kitchen regenerative radio, the coil that he, he has you built, wind, it gets a little bit of everything the way he did it. It gets 80 and 40 meters and some shortwave stations. Okay, so at night, when you know, winter time, you pop that thing on at night and it gets you the stations that are most likely going to be active or the frequencies that are going to be mostly active for a regenerative set. And it's it's really incredibly a good uh, good project. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, let me build a, um, a super hat circuit. That's good. So I did that. I did a super hat, uh, which is the ammo can radio. Then I did, I have a direct conversion. I got to, into that. And then as far as like upper and sideband load, I built a product detector module. That's 455 for doing the sidebands without having to mess with the RF gain. See, I have all these modules I built for all these different tests and all these different projects. And now it's all starting to come together. Okay. And it's going to be this. I won't say my final receiver. I don't like to say that, but, you know, because I'll say this is the last project I'm ever going to work on, you know. And then, and then I build another one. And then one of my projects, like when the Huff and Puff was giving me such a hard time, and it basically turned out that each chip in the Huff and Puff really wants the bypass capacitor right across the chip itself, between the two legs, the plus and the minus. And that prevents any uh, noise, RF, or anything floating in the circuit from getting into the chip and messing it up. But I got the Huff and Puff working. It's working on an oscillator. It's right in the range to make this whole thing work. You know, the modules. And now this guy telling me the, uh, that the thing, uh, you, can, you can use the program pin. And then it's just a matter of offset. Then how, where do I want to put the knobs on, on the, the final product? Uh, how do I want to lay the module circuits out inside of the thing? What case do I want to use? Do I want to use another ammo case? You know, but it'll be a, you know, digital readout single knob see that's what I'm, I'm looking for i want to just turn to the frequency or i want to go slowly through the band okay i don't want a keypad i have those radios let me turn this this annoys me when it's on uh i don't i have keypad radios okay i told you i got a whole closet full of r71a's i have the my dx390 which is always used for testing uh you know i have radios oh i got a a whole room of, of shortwave radios but there's nothing like building one from scratch taking the information off the internet and doing the tests and putting together a front end of a radio and then getting into the AGC how the AGC works okay you know a lot of people oh, I could do that you do it go do it and see how hard it is uh, like I said I grabbed the Collins radio the schematic and I know they're like the, the creme de la creme years ago as far as an analog radio and I'm thinking oh I put a digital display on one of them and there is a digital display for them for $150 and that radio is you really don't even need the, the digital display that's how good the, um, the that stupid oscillator thing is and, and the uh, the band when you turn the band it's a it's a big block of wood that turns and each little tiny range is on that scale uh, I repair a couple of them and uh, when I was working on them, I had them alongside the R71A. And yeah, there's a little more dial turning, but the sound quality out of um, uh, an old tube radio, um, you know, the, fa the fact that first, the fact is, you see this, this speaker here? You use an external speaker usually with the old radios. They don't have a built-in speaker. So right there, you put an efficient speaker on the radio and it gives this really good tone, okay? And, you know, R71A, uh, I go read the mod up on the internet on the, uh, the ham something review thing. Uh, I mentioned how to take the, uh, chain, take the capacitor out of the audio circuit and the R71A will have better, better audio. I'm the guy that figured that out. There are companies that were changing the capacitors for people. The whole thing is the radio has got a design flaw. They have too big of a capacitor in the radio. And uh, you open it up and that's, that's another thing. When you open R71A up, you, you crack all the screws loose first and you make sure you use a really good screwdriver that really fits the screws they're brass screws painted black and you crack them loose all the way around you don't start taking them off because the lid and that is put on under tension and you'll get down to two or three screws 
and you won't be able to unscrew them and you'll gaff them up okay and I went through all that with people oh can you show me a few screws can you I went through all that okay I'm just warning you some of the stuff I'm rambling on here because I really love radios and I've gone through a lot and let me turn this off but just want to tell you this project isn't over now we're back on track thanks to uh what was it pixel waster uh, I think I couldn't I couldn't find his name okay I, I went on his uh, his uh, YouTube channel clicked around for a few seconds you know it seems other people can find me real easy because uh, my, my last name is used on YouTube and there's very few climb hours in the, in the world there are climb hours uh, mo most I won't say all of them are relatives but most of them are my relative and uh, I won't go into that story so sorry I think that's it all right that's it